Hello again, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you about the beam sign convention. Not that kind of beam. It's also called the designer sign convention, and it's something we use when we draw load shear moment diagrams, or sometimes the abbreviated form like that, that's called a shear moment diagram. And to make this clear, show you where this beam sign convention comes from, let's start with a problem, a real simple one of a cantilevered beam. So what we've got here is a cantilevered beam. Cantilevered on the left, remember that comb looking thing, just says that whatever's going on the other side of that line doesn't matter. It's rigid, massive, keeps the beam from moving vertically, horizontally, or rotating. This end is free so it can do whatever it wants. And there's just a force uh, downwards on this. So this is the kind of thing you see in a simple statics book. Okay, so this comb looking thing over here, this just says this is a cantilever. Whatever's going on on the other side of that line, is uh, it's rigid and massive. It's holding the beam so it can't move vertically or horizontally, and it can't rotate there. That's what a cantilever is. So this end is free, it can do whatever it wants. Now remember the recipe for solving a, a statics problem has four parts. Okay, we need a working diagram, that's that thing. A free body diagram, that's that thing. And we need to write the equations of static equilibrium and then solve for something. Well, those last two are caught up in this. This is kind of a graphical way of doing those last two things. So let's just go ahead and work this out. I've cut it free from its support so that if there's a downward force on the right end, there has to be a matching upward force on the left end. There's a uh, reaction moment at that end, so we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and draw the load shear moment diagram, or so in this case the shear moment diagram. Well, the way this works is we're going to start right there on the left-hand side, and we're going to move over to the right-hand side. So let's go up, okay, to F there, and we're going to go over. I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. Give me, just, let me finish this. And there, so it starts at zero. In fact, I'll make that a green zero so we know. Zero, go up, over, down. Okay, so we got, we got shear taken care of. Now, for moment, remember this is, the, you integrate to get from there to there. So the height here must equal the slope down there. If the height here is positive, the slope down there also got to be positive. We know that the moment is going to go to zero at the end because remember moment is a force times a perpendicular distance. Well, there's the line of action of the force and there's the perpendicular distance. Got a force times a distance, we got a moment. It goes to zero here at the end because the distance goes to zero. So we know that on this end, I'm going to put my zero up here, has to go to zero and we know the slope has to be positive. So we know the moment part of this equation has to look like this. All right. Some of you can see where, where the, the problem I'm about to have here. Now, implicit in this, this drawing is a positive sign convention. Okay? That's almost always the sign convention we use, unless we got some pretty good reason. Well, we don't here, so that's, we'll, we'll default to that one. So here's the thing. Counterclockwise is positive according to that sign convention. Well, that's counterclockwise. Must be positive. But it has to be negative here. So something's wrong. Either we messed up, and we didn't, or there's two different sign conventions in the same problem. Well, it doesn't feel good, but that's what's going on. There are two sign conventions in the same problem. There's one, and the other one's called the beam sign convention. No, not that kind of beam. So, how do we reconcile this? Well, it's here for good reason. It's here because it makes this diagram work, and that's enough reason. So we got to figure out what's positive and what's negative according to the beam sign convention. And the positive and negative moments are defined around what's positive and negative curvature. We've had a calculus class. You know that curvature is the slope of the slope. It's the second derivative of position. And if you've got a it you know, goes up in the ends and down in the middle, that's positive. Well, here's a beam. Well, it's a stick, but I'm at a state school, so here's a stick. 
Um, that's positive curvature. In fact, I'll put the moment out here on the ends. That's positive curvature. That's negative curvature. Positive, negative. Okay. Well, clamp there, pull down there. All right. So this is my cantilever. I'm going to pull down here at the end. That's negative curvature. Well, that's what that says. So how do you remember which one's positive and negative? Well, it's going to be dumb, but you're going to remember this. So ready? Positive. Negative. I can do better. Silly, but you won't forget it, will you? All right, so that's positive and negative curvature. Let's turn that into a positive and negative sign convention. Okay, so there you are. Shear goes up on the left, over, down on the right, just like we had on the load or on the shear moment diagram a minute ago. And moment is what induces a positive curvature. So go back to my little two cent beam here. Positive. Okay, I'm having to. Okay, I'm having to rotate this way. So that's positive moment. That's what that is. Now what you're seeing here is this is the right end, there's the left end, and there's if you're looking at the whole thing. So right end, left end, and there's if you're looking at the whole thing. That's the beam convention, also called the designer's sign convention. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.